Well, good morning, Chapel Hill. Uh, we're looking at uh, the book of Romans this morning together. Hope you have your coffee and your Bible. We'll be talking about uh, continuing our discussion on uh, death, burial, and resurrection. But before we do that, let's bow our heads together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask your grace to be upon us as we come to your word again this morning. We ask you to give us your guidance, your grace, touch us with your truth, and set us free. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, okay, so I wanted to revisit Romans uh, chapter 6 this, this morning. Um, we talked about how in Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 that we are connected with Christ in his death. Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ and I will no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Um, then we moved to Romans chapter 6 um, where we talked about uh, the fact that we are buried with Christ especially in uh, verse 4, and that's kind of where we'll, we'll highlight again. Um, uh, Paul says, We were therefore buried with him because we died with Christ. We were buried with him through baptism into death. In order that, and this is where I wanted to come this morning, just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. And that's the point of all of this, that uh, the reason that we've been placed in Christ through, that, we, that we have lived uh, in Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection, that we have been connected to participating in his death, burial, and resurrection, is that we may live a new life, that things may be different for us. There's a version of Christianity that says we're just forgiven people, but uh, we're still kind of sinners and we do bad things. We're just kind of evil as everybody else, but we're forgiven. We're the forgiven ones. And there's a real truth to the fact that a huge part of, of what Jesus came to do is to forgive us. We are a forgiven, pe forgiven people. But God wanted more than that for us. He wanted us to have a new life. He wanted us to start a new life. And so that's why he, he says, not only are you forgiven by Christ on the cross and what he did, you are also placed in Christ so that you might, you might participate in his death, burial, and resurrection, walk out of the grave in newness of, of life. And so that's the goal of all of it, that we live a new life, that we are connected with Jesus and that some things change about um, our living, our day-to-day -day living. I wanted to go back a little bit because I, I kind of, there's just so many angles, to this, some, there's so many nuances to our connection to Christ. I want to go back to the cross a little bit and talk about, and you, you may study this, there is, there's the theological fact that we are in Christ, but there's also the day-to-day -day walking in and and the fact that we are to be crucified daily, to take up our cross daily and walk with Christ. And um, so that the question becomes, okay, how do we do that? How do we walk daily in the crucifixion? How, how do I die daily with Christ? Well, um, as you go back to how he died, uh, you know, the question is, well, do you crucify yourself? Well, I mean, do I just, you know, crucifixion, somebody, well, I was watching one, one preacher once said, crucifixion, is the one uh, death, one form of death, that you never impose upon yourself. Never hear of anybody committing suicide uh, through through crucifixion because it's just impractical, you know. And and he did this thing, and I loved it. I it just it burned in my mind where he says he's got the hammer and the nail. He says, "Okay, I'm going to kill myself." So he puts the hammer on his hand and he puts it up there, and he's got this hammer and he, he's like if he's able to hold the nail how do you do, how do you hold the nail so finally he gets one one nail in and, and then he's got the hammer he puts the hammer here and says he says how am i gonna how am i gonna so, so he he illustrated the fact that this is just not something you do you can do by yourself and so paul actually gives <clears throat> us some insight as to how uh we put to death our uh, the the sinful life and he says uh, uh, in Romans, he says, to buy, if you by the Spirit put to death the misdeeds of the body. So he says, it's, it's, you need some help. Whenever, you, whenever you're being crucified, you need help. And so by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will help you be, be crucified. But I've also found that as we, want, as we study the death of Jesus, we also need the help of other people to be crucified. Jesus had the help of his enemies when he was crucified, if you think about it, that he was nailed to the cross by his enemies. He couldn't do it by himself. He needed some help. The same is true of us, that if we are going to die in Christ and have all the blessings that are coming out of the other side 
and newness of life, if we are to die with Christ, we're going to need the help of other people. And they are usually our enemies. The, the help comes usually in the form of an enemy. So the enemy comes to you, and he has a nail, and he has a hammer. And he comes to you and says, I'm going to crucify you. And you have a choice at that time, and that comes in all kinds of forms. You know, somebody comes to you at work and they uh, say, you're doing a horrible job. There's a co-worker talks behind your back and cuts you and stabs you in the back and all this kind of stuff. There's all kinds of crucifixions that take place all the time where people say nasty things about you. They do, do nasty things to you. So your enemy comes with a hammer and a nail, and they say, I'm going to crucify you. And you have a choice at that point. You have a choice, like Jesus, when he said, um, remember the wording of Jesus, he said, he said, no one takes my life. This is in John, uh, John's gospel. He says, no one takes my life, but I lay it down freely. No, no one could have taken the life of the Son of God. All he had to do, and he said this, he says, all I got to do is call for angels, and they will come, and they will just tear apart this, this group of people who are trying to crucify me. There's no way they can do it unless I let them do it. And so when Jesus was crucified, he, he very clearly said, it was a choice, that I am laying down my life. I allow them to do this. And that is, that is our prerogative too, that we have the choice daily, day to day, when someone comes up to us and says something nasty, somebody comes, comes up to us and does something nasty, brothers and sisters sometimes, in the church sometimes, when they do that, we have a choice of saying, oh no, you don't, either you know, talk to the hand or whatever you say. I don't know, whatever you say. You're not going to do that to me. We have that choice. Yeah, we can, we, can, we can choose not to lay down our lives. Or we can choose to lay down our life. And what that looks like is basically embracing the nail. Letting the enemy hurt us and just saying, I love you anyway. And that's exactly what Jesus did. When on the cross, his enemies crucified him. He spread out his arms and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So in other words, they hated him and he loved them back. That is a picture of the day to day being crucified with Christ. Now, I say that to you almost as if it's easy. It isn't. As some Take it from me as someone who has tried to live it, has tried to walk in it. It is, <laughs> oh my goodness. It is so hard sometimes to allow people, uh, you know, some people call it, well, you, you know, I'm, not a, I'm not a mat, a doormat. They can just walk all over me. Well, you can call it what you want to. But laying down your life and letting the enemy have his or her way and just saying, let them have the upper end. Let them win, you know, and you just say, okay, I, I love you anyway. Um, there is a redemption that comes to that kind of uh, response. There's a redemption that comes uh, that is pictured, and I think I might have said this to you before, uh, but in, in, the, um, in the Roman uh, soldier who, uh, who crucified, led the, the, the crucifixion, he was a centurion, and he was in charge of the, 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 the crucifixion of Jesus. At the end of the crucifixion, he looked for some reason. There's a couple of versions of this in a couple of the Gospels. For some reason, he looked at Jesus and he said, Surely this is the Son of God. Um, so something that Jesus did while he was being crucified convinced this Roman centurion who had no religion concerning Judaism or Christianity. In it, he just looked at Jesus and said, We've made a mistake here. And there's something about laying down your life and doing like this when your enemy comes to crucify you and you dying and saying accepting the embracing the nail something that changes your enemy into somebody who says wait a minute I made a mistake and surely this person is a child of God and that is that is when um, the crucifixion has its fullest impact when other people around you are impacted. So all of that to say that that's how you daily day-to-day -day walk in, in the crucifixion. But both but once again the, the goal is yeah there's there's side effects of people being affected by what happens but the goal is to, to make of you a person who comes out the other side of the tomb in a newness of life different than what you were before. Um, 
people say about you that that something happened to that person that he or she has changed and and, and they are impre- impressed by the change that has come uh, into your life uh, through walking in uh, this connection to Jesus his death burial and resurrection well there's so much more to say about this and I'll I'll be, I'm sure, talking in the days and months and years uh, to come about these kind of things because I really believe there, the, this, this principle, this, this crucifixion event, this Christ event is, is key to um, the walk that we have as Christians and how to walk in a, in a, in a way of life that is pleasing uh, to God. Let's bow our heads together. Father, I just thank you for your love for us. I pray your blessings as we continue to walk in this uh, Christ event, his death, burial, and resurrection, that you will continue to give us insights in how uh, you want us, where you're calling us. Jesus called every one of his followers to say, take up your cross and follow me. And as we do so obediently, as we are crucified, as we are buried, as we are raised from the dead, give all of us uh, this fresh sense of newness of life. And this is our humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you, Chapel Hill. Once again, we have uh, a hope that we will be together soon. Um, as, we, uh, as we look toward that hope, I pray that you stay well, that you stay safe. In Jesus' name.